Well, Microsoft is at it again, building off all the retirement notices in 2023, coming to a head in April 2026. Microsoft is at it again, killing off a SharePoint framework feature. And this one is key to securing your SharePoint framework components that call the Microsoft Intra ID secured endpoints. Now do I have your attention? Cool, and stick with me. Hi, I'm Andrew. And if this topic interests you, please hit that like button below the video because it helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel with that button below the video to see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure full stack developers. And check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. Late last year, I wrote about a trio of retirement notices that announced all of the following services that were going to get shut down in April 2026, including Azure Access Control Service, always known as ACS, SharePoint 2013 workflows, and the SharePoint add-in model that included both provider-hosted and SharePoint-hosted um, add-ins. You can learn more about the timeline of these retirement notices from that article that I just referenced. So what's getting killed this week? SharePoint Framework Isolated Web Parts. That's what's getting killed. Normally, web parts are rendered within a div on the page. And this means that all the calls from the web part originate from the same domain as the page that they reside on. However, when your web part obtains an access token to call a secured endpoint, such as the Microsoft Graph or any other Microsoft Intra ID secured endpoint, the permissions are granted the entire tenant, not just your web part. Now, many developers and customers, they didn't realize this until it was explicitly called out. But why does this matter? Well, consider if your web part needed the mail.write permission to send emails on behalf of the current user. When you grant the mail.write permission, or any permission for that matter, you're really granting that permission to all client-side solutions in the tenant, not just your web part. Now, you can read more about this in my other article about beware of the declarative permissions in the SharePoint framework projects that I'll put in the description below. Isolated web parts address this concern by rendering the web part within an iframe on its own custom domain using its own Microsoft Intra ID application. Now permissions are granted to the web part. They're only gonna be available and accessible from the domain where the web part was actually rendered. But now we're losing that feature and the only recommendation uh, from the announcement article is to migrate away from them. Now they do mention that they are working on to be announced features that offer an alternative strategy for domain isolated web parts in the announcement, but there's nothing more than that. Now personally, I find this very disappointing. Now it looks like Microsoft is saying that iframes aren't good. And if the reason is because Microsoft doesn't think iframes are good for page performance, then issue guidance, but don't just block customers from using a necessary feature. We don't need Big Brother in SharePoint Online. If we did, someone would have stopped users from adding 10 megabit uh, bitmap files or TIFF files to the homepage of the company intranet years ago. But if it's about iframes, then what about using Microsoft Teams tabs as web parts to SharePoint Online? Are those gonna keep working? I just finished working with one very large organization in Europe who was only gonna allow web parts that needed permissions to be deployed as an isolated web part. This retirement announcement, it's already causing them to rethink their entire SharePoint framework plans. But what should you do? Well, in my opinion, I'd hold off really doing anything other than maybe taking an inventory of what isolated web part investments that you've deployed to your environment. Part of the announcement includes a big PowerShell script that you can use to generate two CSV files listing all the SharePoint packages that include isolated web parts and what pages that they're deployed to. For now, I'd wait and see what they announce. I've asked Microsoft a bunch of questions, um, trying to clarify a few points. So we'll see what they say, but when I hear back, I'll be sure to update the article that I've linked to um, that's associated with this video in the description below. So what do you think about this announcement? Are you using isolated web parts in your deployments today? What do you think about the retirement of domain isolated web parts? Are you irritated about this too? Let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you want to see more videos about the SharePoint framework. And if you like this video or you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel by reaching more people just like you. And if you haven't already, subscribe by mashing that subscribe button below the video so that you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure. And let me know if you wanna see more videos about the SharePoint framework. Again, I'm Andrew Connell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.